Welcome to Family Bible Study number 24. I'm John White with the Westside Church of Christ, and I hope you're all doing well this evening. Grab your families, grab your Bibles, turn over to 1 Peter chapter 2 tonight. Go ahead, read that now, then come back to this video for some discussion and a family challenge. Welcome back. 1 Peter chapter 2 is a very interesting chapter. Peter begins by calling us a royal priesthood chosen by God, precious to him. He's establishing that we belong to God. This is important for what he's going to say throughout the rest of the chapter, though. Starting in verse 13, Peter begins to talk about the idea of submitting ourselves to human authority, specifically the governing authority in our land, the emperors, kings, governors, or in our case, the president and the various systems of government we have. Show proper respect to everyone, love the family, believers, fear God, honor the emperor. It's that last part that we may take objection to. Many human rulers over the years have not viewed Christians favorably. Throughout all time, there have been many governments that have persecuted Christians. Even now, there are many nations where being a Christian is illegal, where your faith could land you in jail or possibly have you executed. So how do these verses sound to Christians all over the world and all throughout time that face this type of persecution? Do they submit to the authorities and deny their faith? Does continuing to follow Christ mean objecting to what Peter has to say here in 1 Peter chapter 2? Not at all. There's two things that we need to look at in this chapter to truly understand what it is Peter's trying to say. The first comes in verse 15. For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Peter tells us that God wants us to do good so that we represent what Christ died for in a positive way. By doing this, people no longer see us as opponents of the government, but as people trying to live good lives that have a positive impact on the world. In doing this, we silence the talk of foolish people who might try to paint an otherwise negative image of our faith. The second thing we need to look at comes later in the chapter, starting in verse 19. Here Peter points out that any unjust suffering we bear because of Christ only mimics the unjust suffering that Christ faced when he was crucified at the hands of a Roman government. When we look at the life of Christ, we see an example of a man who was faithful to his father in the midst of Roman rule that defied him. It was Jesus who suggested that if a Roman guard asks you to carry his pack for one mile, instead you should carry it too. In this way, you represent your faith in a positive light while still showing honor to the ruling authority of the land. Being a Christian doesn't necessarily mean living completely in opposition to those in power. And even if you face legal ramifications for following in your faith, you should take heart since you're in good company. Take a moment and pause the video in the upcoming section for some discussion time with your family, then come back for our family challenge. One of the blessings of being an American is that we don't have to fear persecution for our faith. We can say we believe in God and know that we will not face any injustice because of that belief. Another blessing of living in America is that we have a voice concerning how our country operates. We have a say not only in who runs our government, but also in how it's run. My family challenge for you this week is to reach out to a local, state, or federal representative and express something that you would like to see changed in our country that addresses some of the injustice you see around you. Let them know how they can make a change in the lives of people every day. I'm John White, and I hope that you guys have a wonderful evening.